اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملائ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم All those who have joined us online بارك الله فيكم جمعة مبارك إن شاء الله everyone who said السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله some Brothers, I think one brother was asking where you can find the nasheed that was playing uh, Salat al-Fatih uh, to download. You can download all the nasheeds for free on uh, my website, aliyatsayin.com. There's a host of nasheeds uh, that you can download, inshallah. <clears throat> inshallah, tonight we will start with... Uh, with Suhba, and then we will do some zikr, and then do Khatm al Khawajagan. And then after that, we will, uh, inshallah, end up with some salawat. And uh, inshallah, you pray for us on this holy night, and we pray for you, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim. Wa afdal salati wa atamu taslim. على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين مدد يا أولياء الله عينونا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عصنا الله بفضل الله مدد سيد سلطان العليا سيد شيخ عبد الله الفائز الدغستاني مدد سيد شيخ محمد ناظم عادي الحقاني مدد سيد شيخ محمد عادي الرباني رجال الله عينونا بعون الله Always we start with asking for support We're asking for support from our teachers who we believe are connected and, and reflecting the prophetic lights and the prophetic knowledge and the prophetic blessings and the prophetic um, teachings and manners. They are pro in the Ummah until Judgment Day, these awliyaullah, they are spreading the Muhammadan mercy amongst creation. And lucky are those who understand, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them some understanding and give them success, tawfiq to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them to know these people and accept them and try to follow them. This is a great ni'mah. And why is this important? Because there are no more prophets. Bani Israel had, we believe, according to the to uh, the Sunnah, that there is 124,000 awliya, 124,000 wali, each one inheriting from 124,000 Nabi and Rasul. This is from where? From the tafsir of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. If anyone has issues, it is not from our minds, it's from Turjuman al Quran. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, he had a, the title of the translator of the meanings of the Quran. Turjuman is somebody who interprets and translates. So he said that we have 124,000 Nabi. Since Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is the seal of prophets and messengers and their master, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu wa Imamuhum wa Hamilu Liwaihim, according to the hadith, and the one who was carrying their banner on Judgment Day. Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu So Allah is not leaving this dunya without guides 1500 years. That's why Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he said that Ulama Ummati Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi Bani Israel that the, the real Amilun Alimun Amil the real Ulama who are applying and living the teaching of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, they are the inheritors of Sayyidina Muhammad and all the other prophets. They are inheriting from their knowledges and lights and guidance and so forth. That's why 
in today's world, the one of the great afflictions of this age is that Muslims stopped accepting this. They, they, they stopped believing that guidance is through guides and they only accept that uh, directly on their own they, they, they get a book and uh, they venture on their own in the midst of the most treacherous uh, paths because if you think the world is dangerous the spiritual realm is much more vaster and the the enemies from within are much more terrifying than the Arab enemies from without if you think the enemies that you face in the world are terrifying you haven't been paying attention to the teaching of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to his companions now we come to the jihad al-akbar they were coming back from warfare where their limbs were being cut and they're being killed by swords and arrows and prophet وسلم, he said we are coming back from the small small jihad to the grand jihad so the struggle against one's nafs hawa shaitan dunya is much more difficult and much more dangerous than the struggle against uh, outer enemies that we may face in this world and as you see people who join the army they, they go for training people who want to uh, be uh, policemen they go for training people who are getting ready to face some physical enemies outside they are practicing they don't just make you a police officer and send you out or make you a soldier uh, without training and send you out no in order to learn, you have to learn to fight. You have to learn about your enemy. You have to learn about your own strength. And uh, and then they send you out to fight once they deem you ready. Well, in tariqa, in, in, in our spiritual struggle against our enemies, unfortunately today, this is exactly what is happening, is that people have zero training. And they they don't even even today another big affliction is that we don't even have the right understanding and coordinates even in our basic aqidah we have been corrupted our understanding of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, what is what is his due right what is right to believe when you think about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has been shaken by who by people from within our religion who may be mujassima believing that god is sitting in the sky he has a body he has a physical shape and these are muslims in that uh, have the microphone and have the biggest mega microphone for the last 50 years corrupting the beliefs of muslims that allah has laysa kamithlihi shay there is nothing nothing in this creation that resembles your lord so if uh, you whatever you can imagine or conjure whatever you can think of is other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm giving an example of how how even our muslim our basic muslim beliefs have been corrupted another area where our basic islamic Aqeedah, without beliefs, without belief, without your aqeedah, you have no coordinates. Who are you worshipping if you don't know how, who, you, who you're worshipping? How can you worship him? If you believe your God is a physical being sitting in the first heaven on a throne, has a body, you are an anthropomorphist. You are a mujassim. It's absolutely unacceptable to think of your lord in that in those terms so when you when you're bowing your head what good is your prayer if that's what your belief is similarly if sayyidina muhammad وسلم, does not have the proper you don't have the proper manners and understanding and belief with your nabi 
you are also exposing yourself to a serious danger. Because Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all Anbiya, you have to believe four main things. As-Sidq wal-Amana, wal-Tabliq wal-Fatana, from Aqeedat of Ahl sunnah wal Jamaa. That they're absolutely truthful. So when you when someone is saying to you, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have to think a million times before you say anything. Before you give your opinion, which people are ready to give nowadays about the hadiths of Prophet, because he is Sadiq. And when Amin means he is entrusted. He's entrusted. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to Kafa, the Nasi Kafa, for all human beings. Because he trusts him with the message. Tabligh, that he has all the means of delivering the message. And Al Fatana, that Ambiya uh, are very, very sharp and very, very clever. Uh, you won't find a wali who is dull, astaghfirullah, his wit is dull at all. So it is important to understand that we have to go back to the basics nowadays and we have to relearn our religion, get our co coordinates right and then start fresh anew because uh, otherwise we are lost and we can see in today's world that uh, the Muslims in today's world يعني, are not shining examples or role models uh, for the rest of humanity. And that is part because we have lost our way. May Allah forgive us. Our way, our main aqeedah, the belief in Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah's aqeedah, we don't even know that basic aqeedah. I used to teach that aqeedah to awam Little kids, when they're starting their lives, they would memorize uh, the aqidah and uh, later on they will explain it to them. That is finished now. Uh, we have, we have, yani, Kagutha Isail, Prophet ﷺ was looking at the end of times and seeing, seeing millions and billions of Muslims, but they, he described them like bubbles on the surface of the ocean. May Allah forgive us. I wanted to discuss one of the great hadiths. Uh, it is considered the, the akmal hadith fi shamail. Like it is considered the most um, uh, perfect hadith when it comes to the shamail of Prophet Sallallahu It is from, narrated from Sayyidina al Hussein uh, bin Ali, Karramallahu wajha wa radiyallahu anhuma. But we spoke about something else we will leave it till, till next time inshallah because we need to do the khatam and i know a lot of you uh, may be busy uh, but alhamdulillah maulana sheikh muhammad may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him endlessly higher he uh, a couple of points that he's i've heard from his recent suhbas uh, one is he was talking about he often talks now about the, that we're living in the end of times and that one of the signs of the end of times is that يَتَقَارَبُ zaman means the time shrinks and not just perception and uh, you know we used to think about it that it's, it's actually shrinking physically the time the month, the year becomes like a month and the month becomes like a week and the week becomes like a day and the day becomes like an hour and in Hadith Sayyidina Ahmad, he said the hour becomes like as if when you take a pin and you puncture a paper, how long it takes you to do that, that's the hour. And we are all now witnessing this phenomena. You know, we're a few months away from Ramadan, year 2022. And uh, how the time is going is ajib. And Mawlana addressed it beautifully from a different point. And he said the reason why we're experiencing time in such a way is because Allah took barakah from it. Allah took the blessings. 
And subhanAllah, that is amazing, beautiful description of what's going on. When, when you have ulama like Imam Nawawi living 45 years, and he has a body of work that if it may take someone maybe 200 years to, to do. When you take Imam Shafi'i, who lived 54 years, and the body of work and the benefit for the ummah that he left behind, maybe it will take few people a few hundred years to, to do it on their own. When you think about their secret, you understand what Mawlana is talking about. It's because they're people of taqwa and people of wara' and people of belief, and because they are awliya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah, blessing in their time, that their 30, 40 years, they accomplish so much. Now, the opposite is happening, <laughs> it's true. Now, now our time, we, we have all means of supposedly comfort and ease and technologies and uh, yani, travel is so short compared to before, months and months they would take and so forth. Yet, we, don't, we hardly have any time to breathe. And we have so many things we want to accomplish and day come, day goes, day come, day goes and we're not able to do anything. And this is Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad said that this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stripped the barakah from time now for people. So our lives is running quickly. I'm advising myself and those who are hearing to be vigilant and to not waste our whatever whatever little time we have even though without barakah not to waste it on useless things anytime we have uh, time and the second thing Mulana spoke about in another sohba was about the importance of obeying those in authority and this is a long uh, discussion because some people apply it, they take it across the board. They say authority, any authority, regardless of what they're ordering, you know. Yani if you have people who are atheists ordering you tomorrow to, to uh, stop practicing your religion, you follow just because they are in authority? No. But the real authority are the men of Allah. The real authority are the people of taqwa, the people of piety. And especially Mawlana was saying in tariqah, you have to obey uh, those in authority. You have to obey your shaykh. You also have to obey the one the shaykh put for you. You have to obey. Even you don't like him. Even you deem him less than you. You know, as people do. Even you deem him, he has no mind. But you have to trust that your shaykh has wisdom and purpose to put you in, in that position as difficult as it may be but that is the test in tariqah obedience that is the main struggle if you can't obey your shaykh and your muqaddam you're not going to be able to obey uh, yani, that's the training for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tariqah may Allah forgive us and may Allah grant us from his endless mercy oceans and give us understanding. And uh, all those who said Assalamu Alaikum, inshallah, uh, welcome to you. And wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think there's one sister, Um Yahya, can we attend in person? If you are in Toronto, the GTA area, you can attend. We usually have the program, the dhikr, we're having it now in uh, Mississauga in Masjid al Mustafa on Thursdays today. I didn't go because of uh, some COVID issues. Not COVID issues, because there, there's some, also a flu going around, so some people were sick. We didn't do it there, but in general, um, we are having it there. We're having also once a month a Mawlid, or uh, we're having once a month, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, a recitation of the entire Burda. So inshallah, if you can join us, if you're in the area, welcome to you anytime. وَمِنَ اللَّهِ التَّوْفِيقِ بِحُرْمَةِ الْحَبِيبِ بِحُرْمَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ